the crack is, do you know what I mean? Having a bit of a shite in, I was like, fuck, I'll ask him, you never know. Yeah. And I went in and I met Ella, I think it is, she works there. Ella and Adam. Ella must have just started, is it yeah. not Bert anymore, no? I don't think so, no. I got chatting to her anyway and I was just like, oh, just any chance I could chat to someone about playing music here maybe? And she was like, oh yeah, grand, have you got like a reel or whatever? And like showed her the reel and everything. Yeah. And then your man Adam was standing beside her and was just like, <coughs> You're around two to six tomorrow, or, yeah. or sorry, four to six tomorrow. I was like, grand, yeah. It is right, nice no, one, I'll take it. Yeah. See, everyone thinks it's mad, like that's how I got gigging over here. Yeah. I just went into bars and started being like, can I speak to the manager, like, yeah, start yeah. with gigs? And when I say this to people, people are like, ballsy, <laughs> ballsy. <laughs> yeah, like, I just think that's normal. Yeah, yeah. Like, how else are you going to get I, a gig? That's it, man. Because <laughs> You don't ask the manager. Yeah, yeah. You like, don't ask the waitress. But even She's from like, charge. say working in hospital, you know what I mean? Like, I worked in bars for years. It's the same thing. You just all yeah. you do is wander in and just go, hopefully someone's yeah. sound. And, and I think it's also, now that I realise it's a bit ballsy, Yeah. it's going to stick in someone's mind if some for sure, yeah. little well, five that foot is going to walk in and be like, yeah, hey, yeah. can I see the manager, please? Totally, yeah. And they're like, gig. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think the very first ever CV I gave in, right, when I was like 15, was to the music shop owner in Athlone, right? And I just wanted to go in to like get any kind of job. And his name was Benny, Benny Dermody, and he's a fucking lunatic. An enigma <laughs> of a man, but a legend. And he, uh, anyone I that knows I love this guy him, already. Oh no, he's unreal, man. I did, I'll show you the Instagram later on, because he has this new dog named uh, Goujon. He's a little, a little, go wow. a little, um, no, Goujon. he's a golden retriever, I think, with a little puppy, but he does these like Cracker TikToks name. with him. Goujon, yeah. here, sit down, Goujon. Um, but he is, uh, he's a mad bastard, but he, sorry, I think I messed my mic here. He, um, I went in with the CV and I was like, oh, like, I'm real nervous. And I was like, oh, Benny, man, like, any chance, uh, any chance, you know, I could get, you know, just if you need any help or uh, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, what? And I was like, any chance, Benny? He was like, what? And I was just like, Benny, man, any chance you need any help? I'd sweep floors, clean guitars, string guitars, whatever. And he was like, what the fuck? What do you do? And he, like, pulls the CV out from front of me and he just goes, Fuck off! And ripped it in front of me, scrummed it up like that, threw it on the ground and stamped on it and just goes, fuck off, I'm not giving you a job. You're lying! Swear to God, but he's unreal. He's like, I one of his, like, I, I would die for that man. He's unreal, do you know what I mean? All in like just the way Benny is, do you know what I mean? He's such a legend. But since then I was like, no matter what I do to go get a job, no response will be worse than that. Do you know what I mean? Asking for gigs, looking for a job, oh. applying for shit, nothing will ever be worse Asking than that. Asking a girl out, nothing. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> nothing yeah, yeah. will ever be as frightening or humbling yeah, yeah. as that moment oh, of someone without a doubt. tearing up your CV in front of you. laughing. And the whole Stop. place is packed as well. Packed. And I was, I was shitting myself, honest to God. Heartbreak's one thing, my ego's another. Wow. There you go, there you go. Wow. No, he's, um, I actually, I'm so glad he did it, you know what I mean? Because yeah, I think Pleasant. he did it out of love in a way, do you know what I mean? That he was kind of like, Maybe he wasn't thinking that far ahead of it, but he could have been like. You I know. think you're really seeing the best of that situation and sure. trying to be like, he yeah. did it. He did it for nice reasons. Yeah, sure. Like if big that... man had an ego and he was like, I'm going to bully him. Yeah, <laughs> but it's taught you life lessons and it's yeah. built character. That's it. That's it's it. It's like being bullied by your siblings. It's something that needs to happen in oh, life. Oh, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Unreal. I feel like these guys are filming. Aren't they? They already yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sure. Probably. Let me get on to Benny and ask him. I'm sure he'll be sound about it. It's but. better to ask yeah. for, a, for an apology. Yeah, yeah, public you know one I mean? and all. With Goujon in his hand. You know? <laughs> Goujon, um, I'm so sorry for talking about your dad. <laughs> I'd say it's grand. He's, he's bang on. I'm sure public apology to Goujon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. So, obviously, that's not how you got started gigging then? No, for sure not. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Tell us that story. Uh, well, giving, gigging here or just like in general? In general. Um, yeah, I suppose I kind of I've been playing tunes since I was a young fella, like since I was like eight or nine, I think. Well, I got my first guitar when I was nine, so I've been listening to music ever since, you know. Is day, it musical day, family or just oh, yourself? Oh man, yeah, without a doubt. Like, yeah, um, so yeah, Ma's side of the family is just all like, you know, um, not Kayleys, but it's like sing songs. Yeah, and, like, yeah, you know, of course. Accordions, everyone sit around the table and sing tunes. My granny in particular, my, my nanny Hogan. She was like, she's still renowned in our village Bass. as being a performer. Like, oh. I, only like I was home there a few weeks ago and someone came up to me in the pub and they were just like, oh, you remember your granny? She was some performer. What oh a sleigh. Oh my God, yeah, such yeah. a flex. Nana like, Hogan, me, do you know who my granny is? Oh, she's unreal, yeah. So Get it. That side of the family is where I reckon the kind of ability, the talent, whatever came from. But then my dad's side was like the appreciation, the taste, do you know what I mean? So I think... Same. You reckon? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sick. My dad was very judgy on my mum's taste of music because okay. it was always like charts. He was like... Okay. Stop like poisoning our kids. <laughs> Let them listen to some like Elvis and Queen and yeah, Guns N' Roses. Class, class. So he'd take me out for drives and like, like this is real music kid. He's like, see all that 50 cent and all? Yeah, yeah. Oh, listen to that. Class, class. Yeah, my, my dad's god of gods, like can't be disputed in our house is Tom Petty. 
Right. Is my dad's just man. He's bigger than Elvis, he's bigger than the Beatles. Nobody is better than Tom Petty. Okay. So grew up with a lot of Tom Petty, a lot of the Eagles. Then two of my sisters were like about five, seven years older than me and one of them was getting into like Green Day and the Strokes and kind oh, of cool. the pop punky like, indie stuff. Rocky kind of stuff. Yeah, the Rocky stuff. Yeah. And then my other sister though got into Oasis at the same time and then got me into fifty cent actually and G Unit oh, and all that. Cent. Yeah, yeah. No, I used to hear admit yeah. it to my dad, like, yeah, I don't like fifty cent in yeah. the club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, man. Like... For me it was it was many men. I'd be there as many like a men. nine year old walking around just going, many men, <laughs> wish dead to pound me, you know. I'll such take you to the candy shop. Yeah, 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 all oh, stuff. So, um, yeah, so that was kind of where the, 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 the taste came from. And then I think, um, I do remember one time I was like, I was probably 10. My dad had this like hi fi system in like his kind of office, his room. He had like a recliner chair, and beside it, he had like two speakers like right by his ears. And he would just blast tunes and listen to stuff like mad. And um, one day I went up with the. Uh, I was going through CDs and I found a compilation of like 60s hits oh. and I was like, all right, Granny Chuck, and he wasn't there. And I just saw this name, Jimi Hendrix, and I was like, that's a fucking cool looking name. Yeah. So then I took it, chucked it on and then it was Voodoo Child, Slight Return. So like this fucking just, and it just fucking melted my head. So then I got an electric guitar and went, uh, went fucking Can crazy. you shred on the electric guitar? I ah, know, like, honest to God, solos are where I'd kind of fall off a bit because I'm just a chord person. I am. Me chords. I just I, love I, me I, fucking weird chords. Yeah, me know? too. So, I'll yeah. play chords forever and I'll make them yeah. look good. Yeah, for, that's it, man. That's <laughs> and the like, way it capo goes. is the way to go. Yeah, yeah. No, capo think, saves my life. <laughs> yeah, right. I think that was, yeah, I think I did like, so I started playing with that and then I kind of, my ma taught me like the basic chords, like your D's and G's and she all that stuff. Play guitar. Yeah. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she. Unreal. she Unreal. Yeah, she. She kind of just knew. Get her on. Bit. She's oh, on yeah, next. Yeah, she's yeah. on the next episode. Yeah, yeah. We get her over for <laughs> sure. She actually plays accordion too, button and uh, piano as well. She Sweet. slays the old button accordion. Oh my there, god. To god. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no. She taught me that, and then I got uh, jazz guitar lessons at one point from this fella. It was actually just supposed to be regular guitar lessons, and then went in to play, went into to do the lessons with this fella, and he um, started doing these crazy chords, like these, like you know, flat nines and yeah, all this yeah, mad yeah. stuff, and I was like. Forget fucking the Wild Rover, man. Yeah. Show me fucking, <laughs> show me this fucking Louis Armstrong yeah. stuff that you're going off on. Oh, you know I mean? love that. That's so yeah. not a road that you think a wee Irish boy playing the guitar would take. But that's it, though, yeah. So cool. That's why I was delighted. I was so grateful to him to show me that, do you know what I mean? So then, anyway, like, while that was going on, I was kind of just playing around with anybody who else knew instruments in my school. Yeah. Or that. And a cousin of mine who played drums, uh, he was unready. He actually played in marching bands, pipe bands and stuff like that. Crazy, like, snare drum player. Got him to jump on drums and another friend of mine to jump on uh, bass and we just formed this little band when we were like 12, 13 oh, and played yeah. like these battle of bands and stuff. There was one battle of bands where he dressed up in like kilts and then like, cause he'd like, all the boys in the marching bands had these like kilts and stuff. Had these like custom t-shirts with like oh, pink hair and that's stuff. so cool. I just, you know, little kids, little dickheads, little rock you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So Living yeah, that's how the, that's how the gig and started, I suppose, you know. And then over here, you've moved over here very, very recently. Yeah, yeah, last January there. Yeah, I just kind of, me and my partner were looking to move in together and kind of found a good in-between spot between Ireland and uh, Leicester, so where she's from. And yeah, got it in and kind of came over here just to kind of like work hospo and like I do a bit of design work as well and stuff. So I was like, gonna just, you know, flew around and see how we could go with that. But then just walking around town, the amount of venues, as you know yourself, like playing like, Irish pubs that want Irish tunes. And mm -hmm. then like only in the last few years, I've really fallen in love with like, the Irish traditional tunes, yeah. the folk tunes and all that. And I was like, fuck, I give this gig and stuff a crack. So, you know, it's, um, it was and unreal. it's been such know? a short space of time for me moving over here, mm. quitting your full-time job and going full-time with your music. Yeah. And it, it takes a lot of people a long, long time. Yeah. But it just shows you being ballsy and walking into venues. That's it, yeah. Just yeah. asking for the gig. Yeah, for sure. It's so much more, like, um, what's the word? It's so much more effective than just yeah. sending a message to maybe an Instagram page mm -hmm. that five people have access to and mm -hmm. one person reads it and then forgets about totally. it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so easy, I, it's I bit, think it's... A bit of tenacity, I suppose, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. Ballsy. Bit of that, yeah. I think it's like, it's... Well done for you. Well, sound, thank you. Snaps, Cheers. Well, snaps look, for you. Two Irish people doing it, man. It's the same to yourself, yeah. do you know what I mean? So, but no, it's, 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 good, um, it's good to just kind of be able to have it be here in the first place. It's amazing. Like I've just it? blown my mind with how welcome from the day I got here, like how welcome Irish people this city are. This is incredible for being so friendly and mm. so open, especially to Irish people. For sure, yeah. I've never felt more at home. I feel more at home in Liverpool than, than Ireland sometimes, yeah, you know? Yeah, I could see why, honestly. It's honest. just so great. And you walk down the street, you see someone you went to school with or someone you work in the bar with. Yeah, and they're, yeah. They're all from back home and it's just, it's home from home. Yeah. 
It's never lonely. It's the 33rd county, man. It is. <laughs> Honest to God. The 33rd country. Yeah, I did That's actually um, the, the, Cavern, the Cavern Pub open mic. You know that one that you do your own original tunes at? Yeah. I did that like the third day I was here or something. How'd like, that go? It was class, yeah. So it was, to be able to play in the Cavern, so cool. Oh, it was unreal. That was the main reason. I was like, they have a fucking open mic for just original it's tunes. Literally, unreal. you're you're sitting, standing there, sitting, standing. Yeah. You're standing there thinking to yourself, I'm literally on yeah. a stage where the Beatles played sure, yeah. and made themselves who they are. Yeah, yeah. It's like, wow, yeah, no. how did I get here? No, so this you don't have to pinch yourself, you're like, ooh. Yeah, so this one was hosted by um, was Ian Prowse, I believe his name is. He, he's a musician in his own right from here, really, really sound fella. And he like gave me this lovely welcome on stage, just being like, because I just said to him, I just moved over and all that. And he was like, oh, you know, like yeah. we want to welcome him and all this kinds of stuff. And he actually turned to me after I finished playing and like was like, oh, he was great. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, you're in the 33rd county now, son. And yeah. I was like, ah, go on. So. They say it's the second capital of Ireland. That's like, it, yeah, 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 it's a fact, yeah. So no, it was... Um, so welcomed, it's insane. So welcomed over here. Yeah. And I'm sure you're just loving the fact that it's, you're living the dream. You're playing music for a living and... It is a crazy thing, you know. yeah, it really is. It's a thing I never really kind of set out to do necessarily, but it's just kind of fallen into it's being It's happened, that, you know? yeah. yeah. I kind of made a half a conscious decision a while ago to like not, not to not promote what it is I'm doing, but just to not like, if, I, if to me, if it feels forced, I don't want to do it. Do you know what I mean? Just getting caught up in all the social media and the numbers and comparing. Yeah, sure. It, it's, yeah, yeah like, it's for some people, tough. they're really good at it, and fair play to them. Like it's all good, but this is never something that has appealed to me at all. Yeah. I just love the the writing of the tunes, the recording of it, and then being able to just hit like what is it like bounce or whatever in Ableton and have that final version. I'm like, oh crap unreal it ends there for me and then i'm yeah. like i don't give a shit really i'll make a cool video or whatever or yeah. do like a bit of a the spotify canvases or any cool stuff like that and then after that it's, it's done for me so the songwriting is like more important to you than the, the performing absolutely right okay question if you could have five people in a writing session or a studio yeah. session dead or alive oh, stop right you can even have your mates don't have to be famous True. Okay. Well, okay. If that's if that's a fact, my, one of my my best friend Dave O'Shea is. Get Granny in. Yeah, yeah. My <laughs> nan as well. Jesus. Say she, oh, stop. She'd be good for the percussion. <laughs> that's for sure. But one of my best friends, Dave O'Shea. He's a, a lad I know from from back home. He'd just be great crack. And me and him have wrote loads of songs. We need people together. for the vibes. For yeah. sure. Yeah. It'd be him. Ah, uh, George Harrison. George Harrison would be number two. He's my he's my Beatle. Yeah. Always has been. I like George too. Oh, stop. He's the best. Yeah. 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 Is he your favourite? Yeah. Class. Right job. <laughs> yeah, if I get another dog, I think I'm going to call it Harrison. <laughs> right job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the stress of two dogs, I can't. <laughs> it's like two children. <laughs> what kind of dog you've now? It's like a three quarter pug, a little quarter shih tzu. Okay, right. He's the coolest thing. Okay, yeah. His name's NASA. Class. <laughs> yeah, he's a little spacer. <laughs> he's a space cadet, is he? Yeah. <laughs> Completely. Unreal. But he makes my life. Um, I would you still got four more people? Yeah, I'd say Tom Petty. For sure. Honestly, the Travelling Wilburys. <laughs> <laughs> the Travelling Wilburys, you know that super group with like Harrison, Bob Dylan, Tom Petty, Roy Orbison and Jeff Lynne. Probably all of them, but I would probably put... I don't want Kendrick in there. Lamar, Lamar is yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just to be like, come on, can you guess a couple of bars, yeah. please? <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be the best. BBL um, Jersey. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, who else? Shane McGowan. Shane McGowan for oh, sure. Oh yeah, for sure. absolutely. That would be, he would just be crack as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good crack, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Then probably, even though he doesn't write much, even just for his like, uh, his addition, Christy Moore. You know, just because of his thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't this album his... is going to have a mad sound. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Exactly. Yeah. So he like, even just Christy doesn't write his tunes, but as soon as you hear him sing. Christy Moore and Kendrick Lamar. Wow. Oh, stuff. That'd be the, so It's class. the G8. You never know. So there's this fella, I, don't, I can't remember what his name is, but he's on Instagram and he does like popular tunes in the style of Christy Moore. Love it. And he did like Hotel California and it's unreal. And I'd love to hear him do like Not Like Us or something. Yeah. You know, the Kendrick tune has. Like Kendrick WAP or Christy. something. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Proper sure. like. Yeah, so I think, Heavy that's, R &B. I think that's five anyway, but yeah. Yeah, like let me see what other musical and popular opinions. Oh, okay. Hmm. I'm going to put on go out on a limb and say the radio had a shite. That's Give your one. reason, that's or, do you, or do you just want to leave it there? No, I, I respect any Statement. musician. I don't respect any musician getting to their level and doing what they've done, essentially. But I guess they just really do not agree with me. That's yeah, not your sometimes it's not your sound. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's always subjective, but I'm just You can like, appreciate what other people do, but yeah. you don't have to love it, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Um, sure. Gig-wise, what's coming up for you? Any, res like, 
um, releases or anything that you're coming up with? Do have releases, yeah, yeah. So I have, I kind of, I spent lockdown kind of working on my kind of baby first album, right? So that was you like... You got an album sitting there? Like, yeah, yeah. Red, oh. It's all out and everything, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, I don't think I did any tunes from it today, but it's all there, do you know what I mean? So... Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's the lights. You know, we've been waiting all fucking day for that to turn off. Right. have to fucking... Hey. There we go. <laughs> uh, I thought someone was just making it vibey, you know? I thought you were thought you were trying to get like different lighting or... Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's what we were aiming for, 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. That's all good, yeah. No problem at all. So, guilty pleasures, like anything that you hate to love, love to hate? Not a thing. I like oh, I that. I don't believe in it, man. I don't believe in a guilty pleasure. That's such a good answer. I've yeah. never had that answer. I, th I think when I was a young fella, I would have been too cool for so much shit. But then as you mm. get older, you're like, like I used to hate country music. For whatever reason, it just to me wasn't cool. But then I started listening to like Hank Williams and I was like, what the fuck? This is I think incredible. It's Do you know what I mean? So Where we come from, if you listen to country music, you're a culture. Yeah. <laughs> or you're a I'm redneck. a fucking full on culture, man. <laughs> honest to culture. God. Yeah, honest to God, yeah. That's the best answer ever. You know? Don't have any guilty pleasures. You stand no. by it. No, no, for sure. Like even the, the the, the cringiest of pop is probably love a great it. groove, you know what yeah. I mean, at the end of the That's day. That's what I say. I even yeah. love like the theme tunes of like Nickelodeon and like oh, yeah. all the Disney shows and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They oh, would the, be on my playlist. The Drake love and it. Josh theme song? The Zoe 101. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's different. Class. It's different. Right job, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Let me see what more questions I have for you. Mm. We're enjoying our chat too much. This is That's the good, thing. yeah, likewise. We could sit here for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I want you to tell me a wee bit more of like your journey as an artist mm -hmm. like obviously from having a little band and stuff when you were younger and yeah. stuff and then you went to was it music college I didn't go to music college no, no. didn't didn't do anything like that honestly I, I finished secondary school and I applied for one course on my CAO mm -hmm. CAO CEO whatever it was and just didn't get it see it's different over here so it's yeah. in the south of Ireland it's like learning it's is it learning cert? Leaving cert? Leaving cert, yeah. Leaving yeah, cert, yeah. we yeah, have yeah. GCSEs, so it's yeah. different okay. for you, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. So basically, the, the results of my GCSEs, uh, just I just didn't get the course I wanted to do, essentially, right. do you know what I mean? So I was like 18 or whatever, and I was did like, Did you, you think that, that, did you feel like that held you back in any way? Do you know what the funny thing was? I was fucking shit in school the entire time, mm. but then for sixth year, the very last year, the preparation, or the preparation for the exams, I was like, do you know what? I wanted to do this music course, I'm gonna put the head down and give it a go. Like, I was Good a little, I was a dickhead throughout all the school and like just didn't uh, didn't do anything didn't but care then, for school yeah but then came to um came to that year and actually put my head down and gave it a go and then like i just didn't get the result i got and i was like oh shit and i was like fuck i could have actually just mm. dropped out and like fucked off somewhere else yeah. and done something so then anyway like a few friends of mine were going moving to galway anyway uh, just because they got into college so i went with them for a few months just to kind of figure some stuff out and then my uh, my best friend one of my best friends from home dave O'Shea, lad i met, mentioned a minute ago we kind of were best friends and in a band at the same time we we're in a band called glad rats and we kind of had yeah we were um kind of writing tunes and just doing whatever like that and playing a few gigs here and then we had this kind of thing we wanted to travel and do just do something so we just uh, had a look around and we ended up moving to, to Canada. We lived in Toronto. Oh, no way. For, uh, yeah, yeah. I lived, didn't know that. Yeah, I lived there for a couple of years, you know what I mean? That's so, so cool. Yeah, he had, um, he, was over, he had family that were over there and then I just went over with him for the crack and lived wow. there for a couple of years and did a bit of music over there. I actually was doing heaps of like open mics over there, which was crazy. What's the music scene like in, in Canada? It's mad. Like, I, I was only really in Toronto, so I can't really speak for anywhere else really, but like crazy open mic scene from what I was doing and it was a, a few people I, I met there who were like just so like invested in the open mic scene yeah. there were so many on it was like kind of like gigs here nearly yeah but you could do like three four a day and you could just hop between open mics so I was like just a young fella fresh off the boat just going like cool I have these tunes yeah. I just wanted to like practice and performance so did heaps of those and kind of just an experience yeah it was great crack honest to god I kind of just rode out like two years in Canada and then I was like right I don't want to go home so I went to New Zealand for a while lived Been everywhere yeah I lived there for like a year and kind of just pottered around and traveled a bit and wrote a few tunes and like you worked on 16 a like did you leave home when you were nine <laughs> I left home when I was 19 to be fair so or no I was I guess I was 19 yeah but then um recorded a few projects in in New Zealand it was kind of just me figuring out like how to write tunes and how to record stuff and I was just using like a really shitty little um well actually it wasn't shitty at the time it was like a little focus right uh, oh, yeah, yeah. two input thing and it was grand for what I needed it for <laughs> but um just wrote a couple of EPs doing that and then was there for a bit and then I had a, a good friend of mine I had met in Canada who's from Australia 
and I was in New Zealand and he was like, oh, you don't want to be in Australia, or you want to be in New Zealand and hop over to Australia. So hopped over to wow. Australia then for a couple of years. So went from, went to all three. It's the place to place. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Out of all the places that you've been and you've been gigging, yeah. even Ireland and here, yeah. where's the best music scene? Where do you think oh. is your favourite? Uh, on, honestly, honestly, Sydney is insane. Yeah. Not just because of any particular like crazy stuff I did, but just the quality of music that is there is just insane. Like there's so many of my favorite yeah. bands. A lot of them like inspired by Britpop and Beatles yeah, and the Beatles yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Like bands like you know the DMAs and you know stuff like that. Really, really great bands. Um, but I just loved the music scene over there so much, and I worked in like venues just as like you know slinging pints and yeah, stuff like yeah. that, and gigging a bit here and there. And um, people, again, it's like Aussies just being really sound, kind of nearly yeah. similar to Irish and Scouse people, just kind of a bit mental and a great time. It's, and, it's and, as and, if, like, anywhere our Irish people go, we're just... Yeah. We, we take well to the, sure. the well, different cultures. And who made up the population of Australia was well, the criminal class go. of England, yeah. Ireland and, and Scotland, and, do you know what I mean? And the same so. with America as well. Yeah, there you go. So it's all, it's all there, do you know what I mean? So, um, they, yeah, so that, that scene was just incredible, just because one of the venues I worked in was called the Lansdowne Hotel, and it was... Uh, it was just crazy the amount of bands you'd see coming through there and they're like it was from punk bands to like glam rock bands oh, to like cool. so hardcore proper bands different, like really oh, all kinds but even pop artists as well like yeah. you know like like um yeah just really really stuff you love to see yeah for sure so between all of them i kind of was like going around there and, and and did that for a while and it was only covid was the thing that brought me home you know what i mean so yeah. I, was, I was at home for that and then that's when I kind of had to knuckle down and kind of figure out something else to do and start, you know. I think a lot of us musicians you know. did during COVID, we were all scrambling, like, mm. are we going to be able to do this ever again or yeah. what's happening? But yeah. I think after COVID, it was just, everyone just pushed more for the live music because oh, we yeah. didn't have it for so long. Yeah, totally. So it's nearly better now. Yeah, for sure. Especially in this city anyway. Yeah, I can only imagine. Like, And it's yeah. got better as in like, the venues and stuff have started giving you fairer wages and, mm. and things because a lot of musicians said, no, listen, like, you just need us. Yeah. Like, you need yeah. us to entertain your bar. I feel that value, though, that that, mm. that they have for musicians, you know what mm. I mean? Like, especially in the punters as well, mm. like, people are so delighted to hear they are, yeah. tunes, you know what I mean? And particularly, like, I've, I've met a couple of, like, Scouse people have Irish heritage, and then I'll do, like, an Irish tune, like, uh, I did, like, Spansel Hill, this tune from Clare a while ago, in, I can't remember what pub, I think it was in Celtic Corner, actually, and there was this old fella sitting there, and as soon as I started playing, he, like, looks up, and he was, like, glued at me the whole the, time. see the ears, like, Yeah, and he came up can... to me, and he was just so, like, he was like, I haven't heard that song in years, oh, my God, it's unreal, and he was like, oh, my nan's from Clare, or whatever, like that, you know what I mean? You'll and, always hear a wee story like that, and yeah. it's so nice, because it just makes you feel like, Wherever you go, you've got to be a piece of home with Yeah, you. for sure. And if people are mad to hear yeah. the tunes from home, do you know what I mean? And that's what I love doing. I love playing. Some those. of the best musicians the and poets and writers in the world, they all come yeah, from Ireland. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Slay for us. That's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what's next for you? So what's next on the cards? Like any big releases or big gigs or anything like this? Yeah, I think I'm just kind of tipping away gigging wise, do you know what I mean? I kind of a uh, bit of that. I'm working on this project, it's like um it's just an, an EP at the moment that I have that like I released this like album just after COVID that I had worked on and I after I'd released that, I was pure happy with myself. I was like, I have me baby now, I was delighted. Yeah. So I went back and listened to like my old projects I was doing when I was just figuring out how to record stuff. And I was listening and I was like, these sound awful, but the songs are, are good, songs, do you know what I mean? Sometimes it's just the production. You That's it though, I just didn't know how to do it, do you know what I mean? And, and um, I kind of, it was all the tunes that I did today were part of that project. So I was like, do you know what? These may be five, 10 years old, like tunes, but I was like, I want to do a credit to myself when I was starting it off. Get it. And have the, the kind of technical capabilities now to make it happen, to do what he wanted to do yeah. six, seven, Play. ten years ago, whatever it was, you know? So, oh, like, I love that. Yeah, so, so that's the project now. So that's, it's called Play It As It Lays. And that's going to be, I have it nearly done, you know what I mean? It'll probably be out in August, I'd say, by the time it's uh, fully out. Plug that to those cameras, August. Indeed. August, I don't know a date yet, but you'll find out. You know. Sure. Yeah. And it's Spotify, Apple Music. All over the all place. All the ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, on Instagram as No Exit Nullig. So the band, the, the project basically that I play is called No Exit. It's with a friend of mine that I met in New Zealand. His name is Benjamin Delano. He's from Canada. And me and him kind of produce stuff together. He's a producer and a mad keyboard player and, and one of my absolute best friends. And It's he, always good to have a producer on side. With oh, that position. was it. Yeah, we, we met together in New Zealand and we, we, we uh, like, he was the producer that knew how to play keys and all that stuff, but he couldn't write tunes. And I knew the tunes, but yeah. was shit producing. So we just met, our heads yeah. bet together and we kind of made a... So you have to make a hole. It. That's it though, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So since then it's been kind of, it's been us. Now this project, the, the one I'm kind of, the played as a lays one where I'm going back in the old tunes is a bit more me just kind 
kind of doing my own thing with it but uh, me and him were constantly working on bits and bobs we released like a little beat tape instrumental thing a while ago oh. just for crack you know what I mean you know I so. just love that you're like I'm yeah. gonna go back and do what he started I'm gonna finish what he yeah, started yeah yeah sure you and know? do what he wanted to yeah. do that's do, just do right by the care. past you know yeah you're like living for your younger self totally yeah I yeah. love that sound listen thank you so much for coming in and playing for us today and thank thanks so much. so much for let me chat your ear off. Ah, man. <laughs> nah, it's been a pleasure. Thank it's you been so, so much lovely. Thank you so much. Cheers, and thanks to the lads for all the setup and everything. I don't thank them. <laughs> thanks. Man.